let's look at this uh, question. You want to determine the chance out of 100 throws of a fair six out of die that 12 or less of the throw result in a four appearing. So 12 or less out of 100. So this is my sample size, it's 100. And I want to, a four appearing is success. So that's what I'm after, and I want 12 of those. 12, what's the chance that 12 or less are fours out of the 100 throws? So remember that then p hat, or I'm going to put this together, p hat is the number of successes over the sample size. So it's going to be 12 over 100, that is, or 0 0.12, that is p hat. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, is CLT met? And the answer is yes, because we checked already in question four, and we did. In other words, I met this criteria right here. So that was met, and that's what we did above. We both got bigger than 10, bigger than 10, perfect. So yes, that is met. So now, once we do that, it's a matter of recognizing what does that mean that once we meet the criteria, what we're saying is that we can assume or pretend like the shape of this distribution of p hat values is normal. What is at the center? Well, again, looking at our formula sheet, it's e of p hat, which turns out to be p. But in this case, because what am I after? What is p? The chance of getting a so the probability of get, get a four and a six sided die. So the chance of getting a six, a four out of six sided die, fair six sided die is one six. So the center is one six. Okay, so again, it's singular. What's the chance of getting a four to appear on a single toss? One six. That's the center of this distribution. The standard deviation of this is going to be one six. The failure is five six. Again, notice they have to both of these success and failure have to add up to one over uh, one hundred, I believe. Yes, n is one hundred. Okay, so now that's set, and after that, it looks exactly like we did before. What are we after? Uh, one six is approximately sixteen percent, right? Or point one six 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 so on. Okay, twelve percent is somewhere here. Point one two, and we're looking for twelve percent or less. So that's what I'm after. We go now through the process that we've been doing earlier, find the z-score, put p hat here, 0.12. So again, the form that I'm using now, because I'm doing proportions, is going to be this. p hat, we used to be, before it used to be x bar, now it's p hat minus p, divide that by square root of p, 1 minus p, all over n. And that's now the z-score formula that we're going to use. So we look at 0.12. The exact value for p is 1.6. So try to use exact values here. Do not approximate. And if you do approximate, carry about five or six or seven decimal places. And you divide by the standard deviation. And I, I don't try to do this in little pieces. I enter all at once. But I would highly suggest you enter something, use something like decimal scientific calculator. You see here how nice it is. Let me show you how nice it is to use this. If I wanted to enter this entire expression. What I'm going to do is it looks like I need a fraction. So I'm going to click the little fraction button. Then I'm going to type what's in the numerator, one, two, subtract. And now what I'm subtracting is another fraction. So I'll hit the button again and create one, six. Then divide by, uh, I'm going to divide by the square root. I'm going to click that of, and I, again, the thing that I'm taking a square root is another fraction. So I hit the fraction button again. And I then the one I'm going to about to enter is a fraction. So I hit the fraction again, one, six, and then times, and then the fraction, because what I'm multiplying is another fraction, five, six, and the numerator, denominator is 100. So there's my value, negative 1.2. Two, five, and again, I carry many. Somebody carry six.
That should be more than enough. Now I'll write a formula. I found my z score. Let's write this formula. What's probably that p hat? I'm looking for less. It's less than, let's say less than or equal to 0.12. Again, equality here will not matter. Now, now that I'm assuming it's normal, this is continuous. It doesn't matter for proportions if it's exact or less than, but with, I'm doing a normal model right now, and then that stops mattering at that point. So that's what I'm about to enter. Now I'll go into GeoGebra and enter that value. Negative 1.252198, and I get point zero point one two five two. So you want to turn, determine the chance of out of 100 throws for a fair die that 12 or less of the throws result in a four appearing. And that's the chance of that is about just about 10 and a half percent. Chance change, no chance. Getting a four to appear 12 times or less. Even though really what we're saying is p hat is just another proportion. It is itself an approximation to a probability, but what's the chance of getting this probability? This particular, that or something even smaller, is about 10.5%. Suppose that 30% of the population in a city of 200,000 people failed to get at least eight hours of sleep at night. If we sample 400 people, my sample size, and it's going to be 400, what is the probability that 35% or more of the 400 sample fail to get mentioned sleep? This is all about what is success here? Success is fail to get sleep, which is defined as at least eight hours of sleep. Are we sampling with or without replacement? So I'm going to call this question one. And question one is without replacement. But what is the biggest sample that we can have and pretend we're sampling with replacement? Question two. So now I'm going to use the 10% rule. So what is the biggest sample we can have? Here's two. I need to figure out what is 10% of 200,000. So all I do is move the decimal over, and that turns out to be 20,000. In this case, yes, uh, our sample is small. We can't pretend we're sampling with replacement. So we're fine. All right. So now we're ready to do some uh, calculations. And again, it's just going through that process one more time. What is uh, p hat? p hat is well, the result of the sample, which is 400. So p hat is what's probably the 35% or more of the 400. So there's p hat, 0.35. What is p? Well, we're asked to believe that 30% of the population gets at least that amount of time. So this is, again, suppose that. Suppose that, so it's asking us to pretend that we know what this value is, which is 30%. Do we meet the CLT? We met the 10% rule, CLT. Well, let's find out. 30% of my sample size is 400. Is that greater than or equal to 10? And the answer is, yeah, it's going to be, I can see what it is. Without 30% of 400 is bigger than 10 easily. And then failure would be, because these, are, these have to add up to 1. It's 1 minus this. 70% of 400 clearly is bigger than 10. I don't need to actually calculate it. I know what it is. Uh, I know that it's bigger than 10. We meet CLT. In other words, sample size is big enough, so now we're going to use a normal model. So what's at the center of this? E of p hat, which is 0.3. What do we want? 35% or more, so 35%, so we here, somewhere. And we're after the chance of getting a p hat of 35% or greater. Why can't we put this value right here? Again, Assume sampling is unbiased. 
And it's only true if the sample size, the sampling process is unbiased. So now we're ready to calculate the z-score. So 30% is P, one minus 30% is 70%. When I calculate here, I get 2.1821789. And notice this is two standard deviations. This is unusual. How do I note this? Because remember, two standard deviations to the left and right captured the middle 95%. So that's just a little beyond that. So now we're getting into an unusual region. How unusual? Let's calculate. So enter now I'm going to write this formally. And after p hat being greater than or equal to 0.35, this turns into this z score you see above. Okay, I'm going to run a little bit, but now I come up here into a normal distribution. I click to the right because that's the direction I'm headed in. And I'm going to enter this z score 2.18. 789 and I get um 10 Yeah, this is this will happen about a little more than about one and a half percent of the time. Yes, this is unusual. So the chance of if the true population proportion is 30%, the chance of you in a sample of 400 getting a sample proportion of 35% or more is very unusual. You're not gonna, most likely not going to see that.